Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example of analyzing a stress strain diagram. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to get the ball rolling, I am going to share my screen, and I'm going to share uh, a Microsoft Word file that has an example of a uh, stress strain diagram type of problem, okay? So here we're being given uh, a stress strain diagram and we're being told that it was generated from a tension test with a specimen having a 0.25 inch diameter and we're being asked to compute the following. Modulus of elasticity, which we also call Young's modulus, yield stress and force, ultimate stress and force, and modulus of resilience. So if I scroll down, here's the diagram I have. I have a vertical axis here that represents normal stress. We know it's normal stress because we were told this was uh, developed from a tension test, which comes from applying a normal or axial load to a specimen. We have units of kips per square inch or KSI here. We have a horizontal axis that's given in units of strain in inches per inch. And remember, we could also express strain as dimensionless or uh, as a percentage, but here we were given inches per inch, um, not a percentage, okay? Let's take a look at the uh, scales on these two axes. So we're given a value of 110 KSI uh, at this tick mark, okay? Now, if we count these tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, we notice that the 11th tick mark is 110 KSI, which means every tick mark is worth 10 KSI. That's gonna be important to us later whenever we're reading values off. On the horizontal axis, each tick mark is worth 0 0.002, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna uh, determine is the modulus of elasticity. So we have part A here, and we have E equals, now modulus of elasticity is given as what? It's gonna be given as the um, proportional limit stress, sigma PL, divided by the proportional limit strain, epsilon PL, okay? And so just to format this, I'm gonna, um, you know, subscript these PLs just to make my work look a little nicer. And if you noticed, uh, where did I get that sigma and that epsilon? I went to insert and symbol. So a little bit of uh, Microsoft Word help uh, for you there, okay? And so if we take a look at this, um, what are the proportional limit values? Well, we don't have any other information here uh, other than what's shown in the graph. And so we can safely assume that the proportional limit stress is 110 KSI and the proportional limit strain is 0.004. And so if we take our calculators and we uh, crank that calculation out, we should get 27,500 KSI. Let me type that a little bit better. Equals 27,500 KSI. And um, how do I know those units work themselves out? Well, again, the 0.004 has units of length over length, which is dimensionless. So you're left with units of that numerator, which is KSI. So that's the answer to part A. Pretty straightforward. Um, so here's a good question for you. Whose law is uh, governing this linear elastic region of the stress strain diagram? Give you a hint, it starts with an H. So that'd be Hooke's law. So this is just utilizing Hooke's law, uh, the linear relationship between the stress and strain, which again, that slope would be called modulus elasticity or Young's modulus, okay? So let's go to part B. Part B uh, here says compute the yield, stress, and force. So that's two values that we're looking for here. Now, how do we get the yield stress? Well, if you watched one of my previous videos, we know that we get the yield stress by using what's called the 0.2% offset method. So I'm gonna make a note here. Use the 0.2% uh, offset method, all right? So what does that mean? Well we go to our strain axis, this uh, horizontal axis, and we find where the strain is at 0.2%. Now, our strain axis is not given it as a percentage, so we need to use the decimal version of that on this strain axis, which is gonna be 0.002. And then what do we do from there? Well, we start at 0.002, and we draw a line that's parallel to the linear elastic portion of the curve, 
up until that line intersects the stress strain diagram. OK, so to do that, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to shapes and we're going to learn a little trick and word here. We're going to go to this line shape here and I'm going to draw the line right on top of the linear portion and I'm going to change its color to kind of a bold orange just to make it um, a little bit uh, more noticeable. OK, then I'm going to drag it over to where the end of the line uh, starts at 0 0.002. So I drew it right on top of the existing linear elastic region because I wanted to uh, capture the correct shape and slope of that line. All right, so then I'm going to select that line and I'm going to grab the end up here and I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to stretch this up. OK, by holding the shift key, what that'll allow me to do is elongate that line at the same slope, at the same orientation that I initially drew it. OK, so then I'm going to grab another line and I'm going to draw a horizontal line over to the sigma axis. So to help me draw a horizontal line, I'm going to hold shift again and I'm going to drag it to the left and that's going to intersect that axis about right here. Again, I can change it to a bold orange to help me see it a little bit better. Now, remember, each one of these tick marks is worth 10 KSI, like we said at the beginning. So I can count up and figure out what is that yield stress. OK, so that's going to be 120 KSI, 130, 140. And the next one is 150. This looks like it's about 148 KSI. So I'm going to uh, come here and I'm going to go insert symbol sigma sub y and that's going to be about 148 ksi all right i'm going to use a subscript here on y just to make my formatting look a little bit more professional now that is part of my answer right but part b also asked for the yield force so what's our relationship between force and stress well we know that force in this case i'm going to say fy for yield force is going to be uh, stress, so that's sigma y times area, okay? How do we know that? Well, obviously, uh, stress is force divided by area, so I just cross multiply, and I get force is stress times area. So that's where uh, I know to, to write this, okay? And so then I'm going to say equals. I'm going to take that 148 KSI, and I'm going to multiply it by the uh, area of the specimen. Now, What's the area of the specimen? Well, we can calculate it because we know it has a 0.25 inch diameter. So here I'm going to say insert symbol and I'm going to go to find a pi here. I'm going to say pi times the diameter squared over four. And then for squaring, I can highlight the number, go home and hit superscript there. OK, and again, that diameter is 0.25. So I'm going to take out my calculator and I'm going to calculate this. Right, so I got pi times 0.25 squared divided by four, all right? And then I'm gonna say times 148 KSI. And so what does that give me? That gives me about 7.26 kips, okay? How do I know that those are the units? Well, again, you're looking for force, so it better come out with uh, units of force, which in this case would be kips, but also you've got kips per square inch times square inches. So of course those square inches cancel. So that's my answer to part B, all right? What about part C? Well, part C is asking us for the ultimate stress and force, okay? Now the ultimate stress, where is that at on this diagram? OK, where is that ultimate stress? Well, that's the high point. That's the peak of the diagram. OK, it's not the end of the diagram. The end of the diagram where the diagram stops, that's the failure stress. OK, that's where the specimen actually broke. But the ultimate stress, which is the peak of the nonlinear portion, that is the spot on the diagram just before necking occurs. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go insert. I'm going to uh, grab a shape again. I'm going to grab a line and I'm going to go to the high point here. And I'm going to hit shift and drag it horizontally over. And I'm going to use a different color now. Maybe you use a bold green to help us out here. All right. And so um, from this green line, I can determine the ultimate stress. And again, I'm going to count by 10. So 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. That's about 170. OK, so here I'm going to say uh, insert symbol sigma 
sub u for ultimate is about uh, 170 KSI, okay? And then I'm gonna um, subscript that U right there. And then how do I get the uh, failure force? Well, I'm gonna say F sub U equals sigma sub U times area. And again, you know, I can do some subscripting here just for uh, professional formatting. And so here we're gonna say, 170 KSI uh, times the uh, cross section area. Instead of retyping that pi d squared over four uh, term, I'm just going to like copy paste this to make it go a little faster. And how do I calculate this? Well, again, you just take that cross section area like we calculated earlier, multiply by 170, and you should get about 8.34 uh, uh, kips. Okay. So that's my answer to part C. All right, um, got the the ultimate stress and ultimate force. Now, last part, part D, modulus of resilience. Okay, what is the modulus of resilience? Well, this is the area underneath the linear elastic portion of the curve. Okay, so to help us uh, visualize that better, I'm going to delete these um, lines that I used for the earlier parts. Okay. So I'm going to try to delete them. Kind of get them out of the way here if I snag them somehow. There we go. So what happened was when I drew those lines, um, they they were drawn beneath the uh, stress strain diagram, and so that's why in Word I had to um, move the stress strain diagram, and it's still having trouble picking it up. It looks like that's okay though. Okay, learning some some Word uh, tricks and possibly frustrations along the way, right? There we go, grab it, delete. Okay, so uh, how do I get that, um, how do I get that uh, area of that uh, area beneath the linear portion of the stress strain diagram? Well, it's this triangle right here, and we also know that that triangle, um, you know, the modulus of resilience, we can call that U sub R, all right? And then we're gonna, you know, subscript that R. And it's the area of that triangle. So we're going to say one half base times height. And so that'll be 0 0.004 multiplied by 110 KSI. OK, now when we punch this through, what do we get? So one half times 0 0.004 times 110 KSI. So we get 0 0.22. OK, now what are the units here? Well, you might be looking at this and you might be saying, well, the 0.04 has units of inches per inch, so um, that shows up as nothing. So I just have units of KSI. So mathematically, uh, you could put that there. That's that's not really wrong. OK, but uh, the better way of expressing this would be uh, the following. You can say uh, kips, kip times inches, okay, uh, per inches cubed, okay? Now, if I do kip times inches per inches cubed, again, I'm multiplying kips per square inch by inches over inches, right? So you see how that would break, still break down to kips per square inch or KSI. By expressing it this way, the reason why this is a bit better to express it is because you are uh, computing and energy per volume, okay? Modulus of resilience is a type of what we call strain energy. You're building up uh, energy. In particular, it's like potential energy in the specimen while you are elongating it, okay? You are building up an energy inside the specimen as you're stretching it, but before it, uh, it uh, permanently deforms, okay? And so, what is uh, energy um, got units of? It's got units of force multiplied by an elongation or a distance, right? Uh, same concept as work 
um, slash energy that you learned in physics one. OK, so here what we've done is we've built up an energy inside of a volume, and that's what these units are meant to reflect. So it's better to express it as units of energy, which again is force times elongation or force times displacement. In this case, the displacement is how much the specimen elongated divided by volume. OK, so um, that concludes this particular example. Uh, hopefully this helped you understand concepts of uh, stress strain diagrams and determining properties from stress strain diagrams. And hopefully this uh, helped you learn some little tricks and, um, you know, uh, things you can do in Microsoft Word whenever you're working inside of Word uh, for whatever you might be working on for any other uh, project or assignment or or task. OK, so um, thanks for watching and uh, please uh, hit like and subscribe and uh, be on the lookout for other videos similar to this content. And um, again, thanks for watching. See you later.